Uh, Mr. Alex Stewart, can, can you hear us down there by the effects mic, sir? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> they are very good, those effects mic. That's they are, it's just well. the thing that comes through it, what I'm listening to, that's the problem. That's very, that's, that's worked okay. Good afternoon to you, how are you? Yeah, very good, very good, thank you. You two are well up there, are you? Yes. Not bad, sir. Good, thanks very much indeed. Good. Beats being in the Caribbean or wherever you've been. <laughs> well, John, Johnny Barron has been the, the, the face of... The face of the radio in the Caribbean, the, uh, isn't he? Yes, from Hampshire. <laughs> from Hampshire. Oh, right. Yes, yeah, not yeah. as glamorous. Oh, dear, bad luck. Alec, unfortunately. But it, all good fun, all good fun from, the, from, the, from the, the dining room, so to speak. But no, all good. And how are you, Mr Stewart? How has your sort of pre-season been it's been uh, we've been saying up here this has been a very constructive couple of days so far yeah no it's been um that's out she's out there you are i'm ahead of you <laughs> <laughs> great commentary from the great man yeah that's jordan clark lbw to bamba jordan clark going for four and surrey lose a fourth wicket 134 for four and Jordan Clark, LBW to Bamba. But yeah, it's been um No, it's been it's a good really church. Good. It's been a really good pre-season, obviously. Um, everyone's had difficult times, haven't they? And at one stage, you know, we weren't able to train, then we've been able to train. The best thing's been a marquee. Um, and full credit to Lee Force as a head groundsman and his staff. You know, we, we had our bowlers bowling in there mid-February and we were actually batting at, at the end of February on grass, um, which is unheard of before. So that's worked well. Um, and then the boys have continued to work hard and we build it up, build it up and then we start to channel everything through to be ready for the first game at Gloucester. Um, we, we had that two day internal game amongst ourselves, 60 overs each day. Then a couple of days against Sussex um, last week uh, and then obviously this three day against Middlesex. So it's been very, very worthwhile. Um, as I say, we're still working towards Gloucester. Um, but yeah, and the sun's shining, it's been cold at times, but while the sun's shining it uh, certainly feels like the cricket season. Yeah, and, and just looking back at last year, obviously amazing to, to get the cricket we did, but I, I, I spoke to Vikram about this, and you know, the fact you've actually had a pre-season, and, and it's, it feels normal in the sense of you've had a pre-season and you're going into the first game. Um, That's the important thing, yeah, Church, it, you know. La last year it was great that cricket took place, uh, you know, and full credit the ECB and all the counties for ensuring that happened. Um, but yeah, it, the pre-season was non-existent, really, and uh, and that created a lot of injuries, uh, not just here, um, but around the place. Um, but it was vital that we all played, so that that was good. But hopefully, and I touch wood as I say it, that this year is uninterrupted, and we'll start off with no members, no supporters. But hopefully very soon um, the gates will open and members will be able to come in and then the general public will be able to come in because that's why we why we play you know we try and play to to entertain uh, and members want to see the players supporters want to see cricket so hopefully fingers crossed it will end up certainly the second half if not the last two-thirds of the season will be relatively normal yeah, and we've been saying up here as well with, with the way the format is you sort of for those first eight weeks of the season you've got your block of of championship cricket haven't you see so you can concentrate on that one form of the game which actually is, that's a great thing isn't it it is yeah I, I enjoy playing a format at a time because of the the continuity it's easier for the players you know they can focus on red ball you've obviously got to be adaptable as a player but you can focus on that one format eight four day games in eight weeks is a big ask you know i'll, I'll say that they'll get thursday through to sunday monday off tuesday you start building up again, Wednesday a lighter session and then play again Thursday. So, you know, you've heard me say so many times we try and rest and rotate bowlers if required. Um, and that will be needed as well because of the workloads that will be thrown at, um, at everyone. Kemar Roach will arrive tomorrow, but with quarantine and everything won't be available for the Gloucester game. Um, but it would be good to have him in. Um, and at the moment, Touchwood, I think we're um, not far off picking from a, a full squad. A couple of people won't be available. Um, but overall, as I say, keep touching Wooks, I have to. Yes. Um, it is very much um, getting ready for Gloucester with as many players available to make selection a difficult pick. Will Jack's out there, just at the boundary to get going. Nice to see Will Jack's out there having a bat. And Ben Folks, 39. Just in, the, just in this game, 
sort of what, what, what are you as as a player just trying to get obviously some time in the middle and and just overs get overs for the bowlers as well but sort of pre-season wise games before the, I, this has been a really good good three days hasn't it no, it has you know it's been competitive you know regardless you know it's our neighbors from across the river um, but regardless, you know, the closer you get to the season, you can just see players' mindsets change a little bit. They start channeling their thoughts, as I say, to that game at Gloucester, and therefore just fell short of first slip. Um, they'll start channeling their thoughts. So each game, you want to see that progress made, whereas rustiness is going, so that they can hit the road running um, down at Bristol. Um, and, and the batters, as you say, you know, the service has been good and therefore the batters have been allowed to, to get in there, get used to batting. Um, in the nets, in, in the marquee, you know, you're batting for half an hour, 40 minutes at a time. You're facing a lot of balls, but it's 40 minutes, whereas here you can have the opportunity of batting well, 90 overs in the first innings if someone wanted to bat that long, or 45 overs today. Um, but it is, it's time in the middle, it's seeing the gaps. Um, you know, you hit the ball in the net, it hits the net, and you think, well, did that beat extra covers left hand or not? Here you actually seeing how that happens and then the same with the bowlers um, at times net services aren't always as good as the centre wicket and if a ball does a little bit more in the net would it do the same in the middle again you can judge yourself you know and, and that that's what it's about it's really about building up building up uh, with that um, right amount of intensity while still being aware it's still a warm-up game yeah, and, and you said it there you know eight games in eight weeks is going to be a big ask and as you say i suppose with COVID restrictions and everything and having to keep an eye on that that, that, that that sort of looking after the players and as you say, trying to keep them fit for those that eight weeks of cricket is going to be an absolute priority, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, and we've got the second team games going as well. Um, they, they'll start on, what is it, the 12th, I think it is, down at Guildford, a four-day warm-up game against Hampshire. Um, so what, what we're trying to do from a bowling point of view... It's a modern term, isn't it? Bowling loads, making sure that they've got the right number of overs in their legs. Uh, so that when we do come to make the first team selection, um, we know who is ready, who is available, who is fully up to speed and can bowl as many spells as required, and those who are still finding their feet and maybe a spell or two short of actually playing in the first team. But th th that's how it is. Um, but yeah, to have the same bowling attack for all eight games is a massive ask and yeah. to me it, it won't happen or at least it shouldn't happen um, and it wouldn't be healthy you know because um, the intensity will drop off and if they start the season 95 100 percent good to go if they play eight on the trot um, by the end they may be working at sort of 70 percent capacity which is no good yeah, what's interesting me actually is I heard from a couple of the sorry boys one of them out there at the moment will jackson and Jason, who played Big Bash and obviously had a bit of a crowd for that. And then Ollie Pope, Rory Burns, Ben Folks, Sam Curran, you know, test matches in front of crowds. Um, and, and then they all said, actually, to having anyone in, they'd forgotten how much, how much having a crowd meant for, for a game of cricket. So it, it, fingers crossed, and I'm touching, touching wood, so to speak, up here at the moment. Um, it will, as long as roadmap goes OK, it will be terrific, won't it, oh, to, yeah. to, to get, to get even fans the, back? Even the glimpse we had of it last year when what we allowed in, was it 2,000 mm. for a day or two before Boris knocked it on the head? Um, but just having that, it, it, it just creates a buzz. You know, I don't care, what are we, 26, 27,000 full up here? 1,500, 2,000 people in here, because that's all that was allowed, creates an atmosphere. And the boys want to play in front of crowds, obviously and we want the members and supporters to be allowed in. So if things keep progressing as the whole country wants, um, I don't see why we can't have a lot of people in, um, as I say, in the next, what will it be, months, six weeks? They're trialling things in various sports. If they go well, um, let's hope that Boris and his people open the gate sooner. What amazed me last year, though, especially with the T20, is how the players created their, their own atmosphere. Um, because I, I genuinely didn't know what 2020 was going to be like without a crowd, because we, all, you know, that's the thing about 2020. It's, but actually, the, the the cricket from Surrey was terrific. The cricket across the board was pretty good in T20, yeah. and 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 the players seem to create their their they, own atmosphere. They do, but it's probably probably a little bit like say watching football or or the rugby, but football especially on with no crowd, mm. filled noise filtered in. 
um, you actually hear what is said out in the yeah. middle. Um, and, and you know, you're, you're fortunate you're, a, you're able to be here and watch it and be up close and personal. But when there's a crowd, obviously anything that's uh, set out in the middle in encouragement, creating an atmosphere, is drowned out by, by the 20 mm. odd thousand mm. people who turn up for T20. Mm. But no, the boys are good, it's tough. You know, you want crowds. Um, but I thought everyone, all, all the counties, and speaking to other directors of cricket, they were very proud of their, of their players, the way they went about it. It was, you know, fully committed, and, and it will be the same again this year, whether there's crowds in or not. Now, of course, you've got your gate. We, we were talking about the Alex Stewart gate only yesterday, Mr Stewart. And, um, of course, your dad, the Mickey Stewart Members Pavilion over there, you're looking at. But, but the, the, the new construction, one oval square, looks very nice. I'm looking forward to being allowed in there at some point, but um, they've done a great job to, to get as much of it sort of up. That's not a technical term in construction <laughs> construction circles, but but during the, the, the this sort of COVID times, to, to, to get as much up as they have, and it's going to be magic over there, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've seen all the plans and seen a couple of sort of video walkthroughs, I think is the term they have. Um, but yeah, a lot of money's been spent, but I think it's money that's been well spent. Um, and, and, you know, the construction company, they've worked their socks off. You know, I think it's going to be ready sometime in June, is my yes. understanding. Uh, and therefore, once it is up and running, the members will have, well, one of the best, if not the best facilities, certainly in the country, um, if not in the cricketing world. So I haven't, so I haven't seen it, haven't been across there yet. Um, but what I've seen, you say, on video, it's second to none. Very nice. Well, the man to my right, Johnny Barron, is already sort of eyeing up that deck chair on the, the top of the, the terrace right at the top, I think. That'll do me. I think he's trying to already burgle his way into some sort of... Yeah, he can talk his way in most places, can't he? So <laughs> nothing's going to change, which is great. Here's Amber again, driving his wheel jacks up towards <laughs> mid-off. Well, I was relating, actually, yesterday, the... The story of me saying good morning to you about where you were sat now <laughs> during the Ashes Test match and you asking security to check that this man's got a ticket. And 25 minutes later, I was able to get back to my seat. Well, that's it. It's that's all right good. talking, but you've got to back it up, Absolutely. haven't you? If you haven't got the right accreditation, you shouldn't have been there. <laughs> well, <it's laughs> but fortunately, you did. It's the last time I'm saying good morning to you. At the well, start let's of keep it that way. I'd be very happy if it is. If that's a promise, I'll accept it. <laughs> Shot again from Will Jacks, won't get a run. And how how warm is it in that marquee at the moment? We were, we were just discussing with the sun out now, it must be like Colombo or Gould in there. Yeah, I no, it was. We got it um, last when, was, when, we, when we had those couple of really warm days. Was that last last yeah, last week? Last week, I think, yeah. I think it was 22 outside, I think it got to, and it got to 36 and a half inside. Proper. So, um, but it's great, you know, we, we can adjust the humidity, it's got dehumidifiers and everything. Um, but yeah, it's warm. You certainly you walk across in your coat and your thermals, and then get in there, and it's shorts and t-shirt. Um, but it's been the best thing. What is that? Year six? Yeah, is I was it? I think. Ask you that. Year five, year six, um, and it's been outstanding. It really has. Uh, and I think four or five other counties have had it have had it this year uh, as well, because obviously there's no pre-season tours, um, and those that haven't. So I think. Lancashire and Yorkshire, uh, they've had to come down here for a couple of pre-season games. I think they've had games against Kent and Essex and Middlesex. Um, whereas we've been able to do everything here when the game's going on, we practice in the marquee. We've also got a net, an outside net now, now the weather's improved. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just worked wonders, but I do keep patting a big man on, on, yeah. on his back because him and his staff say, work their socks off and uh, we're very, very lucky. Lee Fortis and his ground staff do a great job, but that, that is a great facility now. No, very good, very good indeed. And then it's the first home game, Leicester here, so we'll just be playing as we look out. Uh, I think it's just one to the left, I think it is, that we'll be playing, uh, two to the left, we'll be playing Leicester on, so um, I'm sure he'll be doing his best to produce a very good cricket pitch. Inside edge, driving Will Jack, stick inside edge and off the front. I think Johnny Barron's got a question for just, you, Alex. Just yeah. a quick one uh, for you, Alec. Um, when conditions are right through the course of the season, how excited are you by the prospect of the 
of the spin twins of Daniel Moriarty and Amar Verdi operating together. Yeah, listen, they're both highly promising players. One's tapping on the door of England and the other, say, burst on the scene. His couple of championship games and the, or the Bob Willis games in the T20 he did exceptionally well, Moriarty. So, yeah, if the, if the uh, facilities say two spinners are required, we know we've got two people we can rely on and a very exciting prospect. So, you know, it's good for us. Um, you know, I first saw Moriarty uh, three years ago and then... The year before we signed him, I watched him a fair bit when he played a bit of club cricket and also with the MCC Young Pros. Um, and he always taken a punt to an extent, um, but you, back, you try and back your own judgment and then hope that the player develops and he's a hard-working individual. Um, but uh, you couldn't have made it up, the, the start he had in, in the Bob Willis Trophy games. You know, full credit to him, he wants to do well, he wants to be, be the best he can be. And then to be thrown into T20, again, having not really experienced that in bowler well, bowl the way he did uh, is a real credit to him he's just got to keep building there's no point you know we keep saying to him that it won't continually go upwards you will have little dips there will be times when perhaps the pitch doesn't spin or you don't quite get your spell right and then then how do you react to that because everything's been so good for him um, that we're saying look enjoy it enjoy it except when it isn't quite right and then bounce back again um, but he wants to work hard you know that which is what you always want in any player yeah, and of course, Amar's been away on Sri Lanka and India, hasn't he? Yeah. So, again and, for him. Uh, it's great. He just, just to be around the England setter, yeah. you know, he can now see what is expected of an England cricketer, um, you know, the standards that are required, how you bowl, watching, you know, certainly that India series where obviously the ball spun massive, but seeing the two Indian spinners um, hard at work, seeing how people play, the international players play spin, it's been a good a really good learning curve for him um, and he'll bring new skills back um, from what he's learnt um, in India and, and in Sri Lanka and hopefully um, we'll see those develop here during the summer. Yeah, we were saying that for, for the likes of Burns and Pope and, and folks, it must have been quite nice to be, <laughs> be out here over the last couple of days with some, some quicker bowlers bowling at them. Oh, yeah, it is, but it's just great for us, you know, to have our leader back, you know, Rory Burns, he, he's a... He's a very impressive individual, um, and then you have the qualities, as you say, of your Pope, um, your folks, etc. Having Topley back, you see Topley bowl. Topley will bowl um, when it's our turn to bowl in the fourth inning. So it'd be good to see him with a red ball Excellent. in his hand. So the more quality um, we have around, the better it is. But it's the experience as well—that that's the real thing. Yes, they're they're um, quality cricketers, but it's the experience they bring and the, the, to the environment which um, everyone else bounces off, yep. um, and none more so to say. Having your captain about is absolutely massive. Oh, huge. Yeah, well, I saw that when he came back last year for that, that, that last game against Sussex. Exactly. You know, that, that is the thing, and you know, we've definitely missed him. You know, hopefully he does walk out the back for England. Is it Lords, the first Test match? Um, you know, we want our players to play for England, but if he plays seven games for us, yes. and we obviously expect and want him to score runs, but it's also the environment that he creates. Uh, he's a real leader, uh, and that will set us up for the season, hopefully. Yeah, and, and I suppose that bit of continuity as well, to have your captain, and you know you've got him at the start of the season, to sort of set what he wants. I suppose to whip this one off his hip out towards... Deep yeah, back was good, but to set, set, set. You want them in the dressing room, don't 100%. you? Hundred percent. You know, they create the players, create the culture. He will, he will lead that. Um, but it's one is tactical skills, um, but it's his overall leadership, man management skills, which are so important. Whether it's a young player or old player um, that he, he's talking to, but he, he just develops, um, say this, this culture, um, which, which is crucial. So everyone knows where they stand with him. Tactically very good, and obviously as a player, you know he's, he's an outstanding cricketer. It's good as well yesterday to see Al Plunkett out there as well. Yeah, his red ball in hand. I was going to say, and that's the thing, you know, he's he's won a World Cup medal uh, with England, but he hasn't played a lot of red ball cricket. So again, he's still finding his feet um, with a red ball. You know, that's why I say just said a couple of seconds ago about Topley as well. He. He hasn't played too much Red Bull cricket in the last three or four years. He played a couple of games for Sussex a couple of years ago. Um, but just seeing him bowl it, you know, can, the, the six foot eight left arm, he swings it back into the right hander, um, is, is a good skill to have. What we've got to make sure is that he's ready to play um, because it's right playing 50 over cricket, which he did in the last couple in India. Uh, fielding for 50 overs, it's different when you're coming back for your third or fourth spell. 
standing in the field for 100 overs or whatever and mm -hmm. then backing it up uh, a day and a bit later and doing the same. So we, we've got to make sure you know he is ready if he does come into consideration for Bristol or if not Bristol when we return here. Uh, and that's how we'll treat all our players. We're not going to rush them back. We want to bring them back at the right time so that there's a, a real long-term plan and not just get them in for this game, might break, and then they're out for four or five games. Injuries happen, but if we get the planning right, we've given ourselves a better chance of, um, of having people available for a length of time. Interesting. So, yeah, so as you say, he'll have a bowl today, Reece Topley. And, and see how he goes today, but he, he you know, he's in the mix up, he's in the shake up. Oh, uh, but we'll Red find Bull out. Well. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, no, he, he's not just a white ball cricketer. Yep. He, he wants to play all forms, we want him to play all forms. Um, but first things first, let, let's see how he goes yeah. just in these 45 overs. He'll probably bowl two, two spells of five yep. um, and then see how he is tomorrow, how he rocks up on Tuesday, and then we'll make a decision come Wednesday um, of what that squad's going to be that goes down to Bristol. Yeah, terrific, and and as you say, Keymar won't be available for that, that opening game at Bristol. But you know what a sad man I am, Alex Stewart. I and, do. And you know, how, <laughs> you know how excited I get over certain things that, you know. But I did say to Vikram, when I saw Surrey sign Keymar Roach, I, yeah, I was, I was quite excited about that because he, he is a hell of a bowler in Test match cricket. And I, I think as well, I, I, he's one of those that you. You sort of you think in, in, in county cricket, and from a Surrey point of view, fingers crossed this proves to be true. But he, uh, he'll be a handful in, in county cricket as well, won't he? he? You must have been delighted to get him. Well, that, that's the idea. We haven't yeah. signed him not to be impressive. <laughs> I, I, knew sure that, so. I knew you were going to say that. I knew it. As I got halfway through yeah, that, I was going to say, you're, really, ask, you're asking I've a question and answering it. Exactly, I've just again. reversed it to a colder yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, of course. He, 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 he's obviously he's played. Test group, what's he played? 60 odd, 70 test mm, matches coming yeah. up. Um, so that record is good. The other good thing is obviously played here last summer for the West Indies and you know, bowl well. To, and this is where it's good to have our players involved with England. So it's not just me saying we go and get him. You speak to your Burnses and your Popes. You now, what, what was he like to play against? And, you know, obviously gave him a glowing report. Um, and he's played as well some county cricket when he played at Worcester mm -hmm. uh, when Vikram was there as well. So we know him as a person. As, as well as a cricketer, which is also important. And I spoke to him uh, yesterday, uh, just before he jumps on the plane um, to arrive tomorrow. And he, uh, he's just a, another one who seems an impressive individual. Uh, and hopefully, to back up and support what you've said, he impresses us with the ball in the hand too. Well, we're lucky. We're lucky, of course, because we've got, uh, am I right, <laughs> we've got Flow Sports Caribbean correspondent, who's obviously been, so he, he'll be able to tell you exactly He's, How Kemal Roach is no, well, He's he, been superb. Yeah, he. Um, superb. Well, we may as well tell the people who are listening. Um, obviously, is, is, is the Baron had um, tipped me off and said, "Have you considered?" <laughs> if only. Considered, no, he if said, only you, that was the story. No, he did. He said, "Have you considered this player?" Um, <laughs> two and a half weeks after we'd signed him, so <laughs> well, it, it worked pretty well. He's a good scout. <laughs> Funnily enough, we had that very <clears> conversation <throat> just now about Johnny Baron's brilliant prediction that. Mornay Morkel, whoever gets Mornay Morkel. <laughs> with the championship. With the championship. That was before Surrey signed him. But, yeah, but after I told you that on a whisper <laughs> that, might, that Surrey yeah. might be signing Mornay Morkel, so you, you, you've got the best here. You yeah, see, that's right. the thing. I'll be asking him for the lottery numbers this week. <laughs> <I'm coming there. laughs> He'll tell me And a national Monday. winner. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, looking forward to watching Mr Roach. Really am. And as you say, it's the bloke as well, isn't it? That's the other yeah, thing. Yeah, no, you know, we've spoken about Sangakara, we've got Hashim Amla here. You know, these are not just fine cricketers, but they're good people. Um, and that's what you want. You know, you, you learn from good people, You're not, not just what they do out in the middle. A um, number of times I've said it, you, you learn on the training ground. You know, they, they will set standards um, that others have to follow and reach. And if they, if they work hard and train in a certain way and they're world class in in Amla and, and Sangakara, then why wouldn't people look and go, well, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me? Um, and they say it's not just the runs, it's how they score them and how they go about preparing to score them. Alec, just um, for the, from the perspective of our Middlesex viewers here, how impressed have you been with Toby Rowland-Jones in his comeback no, this season? First, I'm just very pleased to have him see him back. You know, I know he's a rival county, but you never want to see players injured and out for a length of time, obviously. He played test cricket and did nicely and then struck down with, with his back issues. Um, so the amount of work he's put in 
away from the, the cricket. Um, you know, in the gym, rehab and everything else can be pretty soul destroying. So to see him come back and look as though he's he's back when I say back where he wants to be, he'll want to obviously become stronger, fitter and everything. Um, but to do what he's done just in this game is obviously great for Middlesex, but also good for English cricket. He's another one who'll put his name in the frame if he can prove that his back's fully healed, he can back games back games up, you know, play two or three in a row, then sit one out and then go again. Uh, and it will give him confidence that his back is fine because he, he's going to talk to him. He, he, you're going to be a little bit tentative after the injury he had. Um, so it's important that he's gained confidence in himself and then can go out there and do, he never doubt his skill, his skill levels. You know, he's a highly skilled cricketer. Um, so now from his point of view, you know, very pleased for him and obviously his, um, Middlesex and England will benefit. Robson into the attack. Just Sam Robson again. And the attack bowling his leggies. And Ben Folks gets himself fully full and pushes out to extra cover and there's no run. Just another quick thought, Alec. Um, selection's going to be quite a headache for you, isn't it? With all the players available. Yeah, I'd rather have it that way than last year. <laughs> when we had nine and I'm running around trying to get a couple in on loans. <laughs> um, but that's what you want. You know, you do it. You so it's... If you can only pick from 11, it's straightforward, it is, but it's not what you want. You actually want to be saying to people, we can only play 11 and that's why you're not playing. Um, and we'll sit down and always say selection is, is just an opinion. You know, there'll be plenty of people, whatever 11 we pick or in any sport, whatever 11 or 15 or whatever is announced, everyone will have their own views. Um, but we want to make tough decisions. And again, as long as you're, you're honest with the players that aren't playing and explain to them why, and sometimes it is just we have, can only pick 11, um, then that's it. And other times it will be you're not playing well enough or, or whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, selection, we, we will do that. And we've got a decent idea um, of what it will be. But let's, um, get, let's get through the Tuesday night after training um, in preparation for when we go down to Bristol. Uh, and then that will be announced. But yeah, tough decisions, but good decisions and decisions we want to have to make. I've got, I've got my, this is going to be my final question to you, Mr Stewart, before... You're going to you, let me go? Yeah, absolutely, because <laughs> you're getting towards your interview. You've nearly done your 45 hours. So you're, you're, you'll obviously want to chat. about 145. You'll chat to us, too. Well, uh, um, but we're talking about the players going off for international. Now, yeah. I have to say, what got me through the T20, and he, he's listening in at the moment, I think, got me through yeah, the T20 up. and the one-day internationals to see Mr Alex Tyso sat at the back of the dugout with England and obviously Daz Vaness was, was out there as well but, but great to see those guys as well oh, sort of out there doing their international stuff as 100%, well 100% 100% you know you know I know it, I won't say it annoys people but surprises people members and that when I say I want people to play for England or you know represent England mm. yes it takes them away from us but you want to get to the, the pinnacle of your industry um, and, and playing for England at cricket, that is, uh, and also being recognised as a strength conditioning coach in Darren Vaness and Alex Tyso as a physio, it shows that you know they're earning the, earning the right to mm. pull on that England shirt, mm. sit in the dugout. Um, you know, the fizz is he's a legend himself. I don't know if he's listening, but um, he's earned that right yeah. because you know he, he came in here. When was it? He's probably been here now. I'm guessing what ten years. Yeah, I like think so. coming up for ten years. Um, and he's just developed, developed, developed. As a physio, he knows you know the physio world inside out. But again, you have to fit into a dressing room. You've got to understand players and things like so. And, he, and he's done that so, so well. Uh, and I know he went down very well with the England squad in India. So again, real big pat on the back to him. 50 for Ben Folks. 69 balls. Been a nice innings from Ben Folks. And he, he did look good in the kit as well, I thought, Ty, so. Just set up yeah, back. no, it's that figure-hugging kit that he wears so well. <laughs> you know, that's the thing, he's got ever stretching it and he needed it. But it's, um, no, it looked good. I thought the three, lines, the three lines suited him. Yeah, no, it's great to see those guys out there doing their stuff as well with England. Um, we'll let you go, Mr Stewart. Thank you so much for your time, as Thank always. You, it's lovely to see you from 150 yards. No, pleasure. And uh, good um, luck this summer. No, good thank you. And uh, so we've got members, supporters listening and watching them most importantly look forward to seeing them here in person so up watching on the screen or listening to you to Ch chat waffle whatever <laughs> it is i'll be Dry quiet um, but you can't be you know being here you know being here at the Kia oval so look forward to the gates opening 
in the meantime continue to listen to, to the two of you um, but gates open get yourself down here and support the boys terrific thank you for your time sir pleasure thank you cheers Absolute see you both joy as always.